Hey everybody, it's Syndicated Pipe Club time once again here on your podcast player. And I know it has been a few weeks, but we have had some some sicknesses going along. And you know, like sickness does not really lend well to recording when you record the week before. So at this particular moment, you are hearing us again and we're glad to be back. And as always, I have Greg with us. How are you doing tonight, Greg? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm feeling. I know I'm feeling much better. I've still got a persistent cough from whatever I had uh, a couple of weeks ago when this whole um, we're not recording because everybody's sick thing started. But y- you know, it's it's uh, it's not bad. It's it's better than it could have been. You know. Yeah. No. I uh, I got sick about a few days, like probably the the next day after you because it it started on thursday uh, for me. I, I think we took it was wednesday that you said that you got sick yes it was then, wednesday uh, thursday night was when it uh, uh i was going off to uh, pipe band practice and uh, i realized that uh, my nose was just uh, plugged up and i had the feeling that uh, something was wrong you know, i i don't I, I, my fear is accidentally getting the rest of my band sick and uh, having that responsibility be my fault. <laughs> and so uh, I was like, you know what? Just to be safe, I'm going to head home uh, you know, before I get there. And it was the right call because, uh, yeah, the, it took me out for uh, the whole weekend. Probably. Yeah, and, and I do guarantee that I am not the one that gave it to you. There's just no way anything is transmissible through the computer. Guaranteed. Well, I mean, science is progressive. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Give it time and we'll be able to catch, catch computer viruses. <laughs> I'm sure of it. But we're not there yet. Yeah, unfortunately, we live in a world where a lot of times scientists talk about uh, what they can do rather than what they should do. Absolutely. But let's let's just uh, get off the uh, the theoretical topics here for a moment. And what are you smoking tonight? I see you're lighting something up right now. But uh, what is it? And what do you got in it? Well, I've been meaning to smoke this pipe on the show eventually. And uh, since you know we had been away for a while, and, uh, I, come, I decided to come back. I decided to, to break out my uh, calabash. And I, uh, yeah, bent forward. That bent gourd calabash that I got uh, through a trade on uh, this pipe life with uh, Rocky Mountain Briar. And in it, I am smoking um, FNK's uh, Lancer Slices, which is similar to stuff like uh, uh, Seattle Pipe Club's uh, Plum Pudding and uh, uh, Fusilier's Ration. Ah, I see. Okay. So kind of a, a heavy English kind of, kind of blend. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Um, me, I'm smoking the pipe my son picked out for me for uh, Christmas the one year. Uh, I think it was just before all the insanity happened. So it's just a clay pipe with a... Uh, Aluminum band, I think, is that that's what it, the description was, and it's got a acrylic or vulcanite stem, not sure which. And I have with me also in it some Cherokee from the Country Squire. Very nice. And we're like four minutes in, and I'm sitting here going, "Hey, there's no background music again." course i've been actually been spending most of my time trying to get the recording levels to where i want them and then they're just not hitting like they we sound good to me but and i hope they i hope we sound good to you guys that are listening but it's just not where i want it i'm gonna have to do some playing in the in the post and i hate that i just like to be able to get it all done and not have to play with it you know of course i'm also talking a little lower than i normally would because i'm no longer in the basement i am in a room where all 
four of my kids are sleeping around me. So, yeah, pros and cons, pros and cons. Right, right. You know, speaking of music, I know uh, before the recording, uh, we talked about how, uh, the, as one of the possible topics was, uh, you know, what do you listen to while smoking your pipe? Um, even though that's not the necessarily the topic that we're going to do tonight, um, you know, I thought it might be good to just kind of have a general, just kind of like a music discussion with you. Uh, um, you know, what uh, what do you enjoy listening to? Like, uh, both like when enjoying the pipe and uh, just during the day. During the day, I have absolutely no control over the radio. That belong that kind of control belongs to my wife and my kids. I don't get to listen to anything. However, when I do get a chance to listen to it, I am very simple and eclectic taste. I listen to either Sea Shanties or Weird Al. That's it. Right. And that's, uh, that's interesting, too. I mean, in a sense, we have, uh, in, in a sense, like all music kind of tells a story in, in some sense or another, but... Uh, you know, those two especially, like uh, Sea Shanties and uh, yep. Weird Al songs, both are, are very heavily story focused rather than uh, necessarily just like uh, pop or uh, you know, talking about your feelings. No, absolutely. And uh, there's just as you've discovered yourself there's so much of a backlog and whatnot in uh in the al catalog that you could uh hear you know anything and everything of his and still find something new going on with it right right uh you know like he's been going since the late 70s like uh, with his music it's just incredible yes his music career is as long as my entire lifetime yeah and uh i actually just watched uh earlier uh it was last week i think well, actually it was while i was sick i uh looked up his uh, i was trying to look up his music videos because uh, well, i wanted to watch uh, his well first I, I was watching thriller and then i remembered um al did a parody of uh like the ending of thriller in one of his music videos which i this uh, um Yep. Eat it. Eat it. And um, oh, which I couldn't remember. But in the process of like trying to find that video, I realized that he did. Uh, uh, I, I'm really bad about the same to Al's new stuff in the sense that I haven't really, um, just because I'm just listening to like the, the stuff that I normally do. But I didn't realize that he actually did a parody of uh, I think his name's uh, Pharrell Williams, uh, Happy, and uh, did it as Tacky. Yep, and uh, and so I watched the video for that. And it was uh, really good, actually. But uh, it's amazing how young he still looks, like for his age. Yeah, he's in his sixties now, I believe. Late fifties, early sixties, somewhere in there. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he it, does I, look he, great for a man his age. He still looks like he's, uh, you know, he did when I started watching him with uh, like running the scissors. Yep. Like that. Yep. He does. He hasn't changed much since uh, visual, like in looks, since the uh, running the scissors era. I mean, yeah, you, you, can, he, you can see by his face that he has gotten older. I mean, that's not something that you can avoid, but he's not looking like he's ancient either right right he look, he looks really good um and you can you know they talk about how uh, you know he doesn't drink or uh smoke or do drugs and i'm sure that probably has a lot to him retaining uh a more youthful look than say a lot of like uh, other people that might be in his position like <laughs> but or even like uh, the rolling stones where they've always kind of looked haggard yeah. Yeah. There, there's a reason I went and saw two of Al's shows. There, there is. There really is. Like, I went and saw him unplugged in Toronto, and I saw his regular show with all the, uh, all the bells and whistles, 
when he came out with Mandatory Fun, which is the album that has Handy on it, the uh, parody you were just referencing, and uh, also uh, quite a few others. It, it was it was a, it was a great show. He, he he always includes some of the some of the fun ones. But I really like the unplug plug one he did, where it's just acoustic instruments and whatnot, and there's no. It was like just him and his support people, like the band members, like playing uh, instruments on stage in a small venue, and and that was it. That was it. Now I would have loved to go to the show, gone to the show the next year where he was playing with a full orchestra behind him, but I couldn't convince my wife to let me spend that kind of money again a year later not that Al's expensive comparatively to artists but it's still like you know I, I just spent three hundred dollars uh, one year uh, like less than a year ago I wasn't gonna get another three hundred dollars it just wasn't happening right right uh, I'm just used to <laughs> I'm used to the day uh, shows that I used to go to in high school costing like uh, five to ten dollars to get it. So <laughs> hearing that, uh, and it, it makes sense for Al, but uh, oh man, that's a uh, that would be a steep price. Hey, it's no Taylor Swift. My sister went to see her in concert in Toronto the same year I went to uh, the. Uh, the unplugged tour that I'm calling it. That's not its name. It was the some long thing vanity tour. But right. anyway, that trip cost her fifteen hundred, and most of that was the tickets. Goodness, man, that is uh, that is insane. Yes, and so is my sister. I don't care how good an artist is; they are not worth that much money. I'm right, not saying right. they I mean, don't need to make money. I'm saying they are not worth that kind of money. I mean, they better be like inviting you to spend the day with them and, uh, and, and hanging out and like uh, hooking you up with like all their merch. Oh, 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 believe me, my sister got the, the backstage pass and, and all that stuff that go along with it. I mean, it was the full experience. I don't know if she got to meet Taylor Swift or not, but. There was a lot of extra stuff in that in that package she bought. Absolutely. Gotcha. So that wasn't just like uh, you got to sit uh, in the nosebleed section kind of. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. These were good tickets. Like we're, we're talking floor seats and uh, within the first 15 rows of the stage, that kind of thing. Yeah. OK, that makes sense. I mean, again, there's no judgment because I, I like I said, I. I, I do think Al is worth it. I just, uh, I have no real uh, uh, idea of like how much these these concerts are supposed to be. Well, well, to put it to you this way, um, my sister's package was for her. The three hundred dollars I spent covered two people with the same level of access. Okay, so that was yeah. That's two tickets. So yeah, that's not. Uh, that's really not that bad. No, no, it's not. Like I said, like I said, he's one of the cheapest shows around, professionally. And he's quality, so. Yeah. I, I have to imagine, too, that that has to be so much fun, too, just because of uh, the style of music that uh, he does. Absolutely. But I must say, if I ever get the chance again to go and see another one, I will. And I will be getting the package that I wanted both other times that include the meet and greet. Nice. The first time it was just kind of last minute and I couldn't get those tickets. Mm -hmm. I just happened to luck out to find a couple of tickets for the... Uh, the VIP passes where you can get some backstage, you can get some, uh, you know, you get there early, you avoid the rush, you know, access to all the merch and whatnot before, like, everybody gets there, that kind of thing. Um, both times, but the second time really ticked me off because I was purposely 
uh, for the vanity tour looking for the good tickets. Those are what I wanted. Those are what I was told I had by Ticketmaster. And then, oh me, I accidentally deleted the email that said it. And I found, come to find out uh, closer to the day, hey, why am I not getting my VIP stuff? Gave a call to some people and found out, no, you just have regular tickets. And so, well, that's not what I want, what I ordered. I've been under the impression for months now that I was meeting the man. And I said, and now I don't have enough money to pay for the rest of the package. Right. That's annoying. Yeah, it, it was. Like, I'm sitting there going, I got notified. Uh, I got on the list to be notified, you know, was like the fan list, you know. It, it was. I, I, I did jump through a lot of hoops to try to get this. And it, I was so mad. But those are bygone days now, and, uh, well. Yeah. I will hmm. say, Al is probably one of the few famous people that I probably wouldn't mind meeting. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think you get along with him in these in these meet and greets. Like, you know, you get picture taken, something signed, maybe chat yeah. for a minute or two, and that's the end of it. But that'd be good enough. I, I went to a... Uh live event for um, uh, Cinematic Titanic, which uh, is something that uh, some of the Mystery Science Theater people were doing. And so I got to see them live twice. And the second time, uh, we stayed and uh, were able to get to, uh, they all stayed and was, uh, had some tables set up and would sign and, and chat with anyone that uh, came through the line. And gotcha. so we did that, and uh, yeah, no, that was uh, that was pretty fun. They were all really nice and cool. Um, uh, Joel, the first host and creator of Mystery Science Universe, was uh, was pretty tired, but uh, it was that was still a fantastic uh, time to to meet all of them. Well, I just figured out why the numbers weren't looking right on the uh, on the recording peaks and valleys and all this stuff on the waveform. The uh, recording volume in the program got turned down somehow, like way down. It was like recording at 30%. Uh, I did it again. It's jumping down. I'm having to adjust back up. I think every time I've been hitting P's hard and it's jumping the volume down to account for that. Gotcha. And uh, it's, yeah, it's doing it again. Right now, I'm, I'm watching it go down as I'm talking. It's trying to keep keep it level, I think. And I don't remember how to fix that so it stops. It just keeps going down. Got some research to do again. Yeah. So I guess, uh, should we call it then? Oh, no, 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 no. No, I just okay. got to keep an eye on it. Okay. It all it all sounds fine in the end. The 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 processes that I use after the fact will get it up where it needs to be. It, it'll be yeah. it'll be fine. Yeah. Not that I'm trying to escape the recording or anything, because I I do want to. I am looking forward to and excited about talking about D and D, but uh, you know, at least uh, it, it's salvageable then. Oh yeah, absolutely. Apparently, as long as I don't look directly at the screen you're on and keep following along on the other one, it, it looks like it's going to be fine. Yeah. Might just have to. Hmm. It's just going to annoy me. Yeah. Well, I guess we can keep it on the shorter end, but. Uh, um, I wanted to ask you as well, um, like, how did you uh, get into uh, listening to Sea Shanties? Sea of Thieves. Ooh. 
I heard somebody say on when I was watching a video, um, I was trying to figure something out about the game. I went to YouTube, of course, and I was watching a a, rec, a, a video that was made from a live stream. And uh, you know how streamers are; they have um, you know the same kind of things that we have to watch out for if we're playing music or whatever, you know, copyright and all that stuff. And uh, this kid that he was uh, against in uh, in the game came at him with the Pirates of Car- the Caribbean theme playing. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, he uh, got, got him to stop and told him to play... Um, the group called the Longest Johns. They're a sea shanty group out of the UK. And so far as I've heard anyway, I don't know exactly how true it is, but so far as I've heard, they um, don't have any of that copyright stuff on their music to the for, for use, I mean. Like, they're not going to come after you if you're using their music in a video or, or whatnot. I haven't been able to confirm that otherwise I would probably be playing it behind this right right but that's how just from that and then I I uh, looked them up and found them on on Spotify and pra- practically anywhere you can find music like that and made a uh, saved all their stuff into a playlist and uh, that's how nice Yeah, it's not a genre I listen to a lot, but um, when I started listening to more like Celtic kind of music, um, and I was keeping it more uh, universal for like, uh, for like Irish bands or, or Scottish bands uh, to play that uh, had vocals in them, uh, sea shanties would pop up here and there. They were always uh, interesting to listen to. Just with uh, like the, the different like uh, stories that they would have uh, in, in them and everything. Um, I don't know it, it was very uh, fascinating to listen to. So I've always uh, kind of enjoyed that. And so one day I hope that uh, uh, once I'm proficient enough on, on the pipes and everything, I'm ready to pick up another instrument. I'm thinking about picking up. Uh, trying to play the concertina. Gotcha. That could be fun. Yeah. I mean, I think so. It just, uh, uh, you know, I like stuff with history to it. And uh, it uh, appeals to me. Yeah. So you also, you there, you mentioned D&D. And, uh, just, I guess, since we brought it up, um, in case you're wondering, we are going to be playing together in an online game uh, run by a friend of mine. Uh, Greg's starting up. We've already played a, played a round, but Greg's starting up with us um, on the 17th of October in 11 days. As my friend's leaving tomorrow, recording time, the 7th, for a trip to see his niece get married. So that kind of eliminates gaming of any kind, really. Um, so yeah, um, we've, we've run a session, uh, just two of us plus the, the, the DM and, um, it was all right. I mean, we each ran two characters for the, for the players. So I'm running a set of brothers, half elf barbarian and a half elf wizard. With so far paired with a dwarven fighter and a human ranger. And what are uh, your your characters' classes again? Barbarian and wizard. Gotcha. Yeah, I know that might seem seem to somebody who who doesn't quite understand. Um, they might seem like an interesting pair to have together, but there's a reason for it. Wizards are squishy. They don't mm-hmm. get armor. Well, I think it's uh, um, 
know, I play a lot of RPGs, and uh, one of the things that, uh, or, or, you know, video game role-playing games, uh, and uh, one of the things that you always think about when uh, building a party to go out and everything is you want a party, party synergy. Yeah. So that, uh, you know, not everyone does the same thing. Uh, because if you run up into a situation where, you know, like, oh, uh, this is a very uh, high defense character that uh, you know, is weak to magic, but, uh, you know, against physical attacks is very strong. You know, a party of four barbarians isn't going to do very well against No, them. not at all. So you want uh, a, a good balanced party for So I, to me, that makes sense to do uh, a barbarian and a wizard uh, so that they can kind of uh, complement each other. It also helps that they're brothers. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I've, uh, you know, I've always wanted to play. Well, not always, but, uh, you no. Know, you know, being a fan of uh, RPGs and enjoying you know fantasy stuff like lately i had been uh, really interested in trying my hand at uh playing dnd and you know having listened to uh you know uh like the some of the information i've been listening to has been about like the different versions out there i think i'm i'm pretty happy with jumping into fifth edition because uh, there seems to be a lot that uh, from the sounds of it I, I, that i really yeah, yeah. My understanding of it too is uh, fifth edition has balanced out a few things that were lacking in some of the other editions, so uh, it makes it, I guess, easier for a new player to get in and understand. Which, honestly, we both are. Like I've played exactly one round of D and D more than Greg. Right. But I have played other role playing games before, so some of the skills do transfer. But uh, it doesn't always mean that things are going to be easier for me. Is, is it sure I might have played a few role playing games back, you know, 20 years ago when I was in my early 20s? And there's 20 years for for gameplay to evolve here. So it, it's like uh, it's like your video games, you know, they evolve, they change. I mean, look at look at well, look at Sea of Thieves. It was a simple seafaring game and, you know, about pirates and they took it to, you know, having Megalodon swimming around and skeleton ships sailing around, which is about where I came in after all those updates at the year mark. And they added tall tales for you to go on, which is, you know, story mode, basically. And then they added Jack Sparrow, like just six months ago and this most recent update you are now basically battling merfolk and sirens so they have gone you know they're, they're bringing in all the pirate you know, you know uh, stuff and all the sea stuff the you know, fables and all that stuff and it's really fun I wish I had more time to play it oh for sure I, I feel that way a lot I get uh too a bit, like, I'll wake up and I'll be like, I think I'm going to play a video game today, and get to the end of the day, and it's like, uh, I think I am going to go to bed now. Yeah. Oh, well, usually it's, uh, I think I'm going to go outside and uh, try to write, but kind of just fart around on my computer a bit, and uh, be irresponsible with my time. But, uh, you know, the, a lot of that is just decompressing from Oh, absolutely. Everybody's got to decompress. That's for sure. But, uh, no, I, I, you know, uh, I want about two years ago, I started watching some YouTube videos about uh, D and D and kind of got the itch to play it. And I picked up, uh, the essentials box at target, which has like, uh, you know, pamphlets for, for rules and everything. <laughs> Definitely not like, uh, anything super in-depth, but uh, 
enough to kind of get you going a little bit. That's not something you'd want to stick with. Um, and thought about doing that, but then, uh, you know, then my wife, uh, a couple months later, my wife got pregnant and uh, the coronavirus came. And, uh, I don't know, it just uh, fell on the back burner. But now I'm definitely more open to, well, definitely, uh, I think, uh, ready to play. It also helps that we can do it virtually. You, you don't mm-hmm. have to go anywhere because really the group of all the players, if everybody can, if everybody makes it next time is you in Illinois, another guy in the central time zone, but I'm not sure exactly where he is. Um, I don't know what state basically is what I'm saying. So there's two of you over there and three of us over here, me and Bruce here in the same city. And uh, the other lady that's going to be playing with us is in the Niagara region. So, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be fun and we can all do it together virtually via Discord. So I've set one up for the group and I'm getting trying to get some other people involved in it, too, so that, you know, there are going to be other games going on on this. I'm trying to make basically what I'm trying to do is get a community server where a bunch of people who want to play D&D, they can, you know, be on there and you have like two, three, four, five games going at once with with different groups at different times, you know? Mm -hmm. absolutely I'm sure there are like other servers like that out there but you know I figured why not I'll give it a shot see if I can get something going and and worst case scenario is even if the group that we're we're playing with are the only ones that uh, that play on it well we've got a group yeah yeah absolutely But, but, uh, 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 but I, I, I'm excited too about like all the changes that they've added to because uh, like I really like Lord of the Rings, but uh, to be honest, like the standard Lord of the Rings kind of uh, races didn't really interest me in terms of like picking uh, who I'd want to like play as. I'd probably just end up playing dwarf all the time or something. Uh, but uh, a lot of the races that they've added, even uh, through fifth edition right now they're adding quite a bit uh it, it definitely appeals to me so uh, I, I mean it's definitely geared towards me, uh, me trying it now and that's always a good time to try something new absolutely well with that being said i think we will call it here and uh Sorry, everybody, about the technical difficulties going through because, well, I'm not cutting any of it. You get to hear it all. But anyway, if you want to get in touch with us throughout the week, you can always find me on Twitter at DrAlien201. Greg is here on Twitter as well at the underscore Badger Piper, although I don't think he's on as often as most. Um, there will be links included in the description down below and uh, in the comment section, the, you, know, you know, the standard places you can find all that stuff so that you can, you know, find us on the socials. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button and uh, follow us on your favorite pod- uh, podcast uh, app of your choice. And hey, you know, even... Uh, Leave us a good review on uh, the App Store. And uh, if you want to leave a negative review, uh, write it on a piece of paper and uh, mail it. Uh, they'll definitely post that there. Uh, you can be sure and, and confident in that. Yes, yes. If you like what you hear, this has been you know me and Greg talking and having a great time. If you didn't like what you heard today, this has been a production of the Canadian National All-Inclusive Men's Choir. Yes, absolutely. With that, not the San Francisco. Not the San Francisco branch. They're better. Anyway, they're worse. No, they, they're uh, really <laughs> well, uh, I mean, they're better in terms of uh, deserving mail. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. Anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. Have good smokes, great entertainment, and we will hopefully see you next week. Ciao, see you later.